The need is the revelation that Jesus saved me from something that should have killed me. Revelation-based worship does not require someone to tell you to lift your hands, does not require someone to tell you to praise him. It is something that you can't help but do because the revelation of who he is and what he can and has done. But the scripture goes further and says, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is looking for those who don't need to be pumped up as to why they should praise, but he is looking for those that have spent some time with the Savior and praise him freely and willfully. But the scripture says, the Father seeks such as these. Seek here comes from uh, the Greek word meaning to crave, which means God craves truth worshipers. Crave means to long for, to want greatly, to desire eagerly, to require, to need. True worshipers are God's craving, and anything God craves, God sustains. In other words, when you are a true worshiper, you become God's drug, and God makes sure he always has a supply of his craving. My worship guarantees my sustainability. My help is somebody in here. And so it brings new insight to uh, 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 when the praises go up, the blessings of God come down. When the praises go up, sustain comes in. It means that God is going to make sure he has a full supply of his craving. <laughs> but you've got to make sure that you're on the right side of the worship. But can we... But can we take it a step further? Because if all of this is great and, and, and this is an aspect of revelation-based worship, one that doesn't need to be pumped, one that doesn't need to be pride, one that praises God because you've had an encounter with Jesus outside of the four walls of the church because you know that he's able, that you know that he is the God of your salvation, that he's the one that provided when you didn't have all those things. It's just something that you can't keep to yourself. Like Jeremiah says, like fire, shut up in my bones. All of that is wonderful, but that is not the full revelation of Revelation-based worship. As the scripture says that those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The interesting thing about worship is worship requires sacrifice. And without sacrifice, there is no true worship. And so this is what God craves, which is stated in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. That's one translation, how it interprets it. See, the old saints didn't need to be prompted to praise God and didn't need to be prompted to worship and didn't need to be in Encourage every single moment of the ever sended blessed day, amen, because they desire to live holy. I ain't gonna watch you. I see I'm taking a detour right here. See the, see, the, see the interesting thing, contrary to popular belief, holiness is still right. And see, you've got to realize that God is seeking such as these. I, I know I just called you up, gave you a curveball. Uh, see, see, there is an interesting thing about this that true worshipers, amen, aren't just the ones that don't need to be pumped and pride to praise God. They're not just the ones ones, amen, that can dance, amen, with no music. They're not just the ones that can holler, amen, when nobody else is hollering, but they are the ones that have offered up their body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. I came to let you know true worship is living a life that God is pleased with. I'm sorry, amen, didn't need to bust your bubble, amen, glory to God, but God, amen, is not looking for folks that are slipping and dipping and making all types of excuses for it, but but true worship means I'm trying to live right, I'm trying to live holy, and I understand that God wants praise from clean hands. And so, and so here now, the aspect we have been imitating, but we've been imitating the wrong thing. And see, here now you've got to realize is that God is looking for someone who is willfully giving of their life, surrendering to the will of God, surrendering to the way of God, and says, yes, it is hard. Yes, it is difficult. Every now and then my flesh kicks up, but I desire that nothing is going to taint my worship. Nothing is going to taint my praise. And if I've got to get back down 
down on the altar and say, Lord, I repent. Lord, wash me in your blood. Lord, crucify my flesh. Lord, matter of fact, kill my flesh. God, strengthen my spirit. I'm not going to let anything stop me from messing up my worship. Revelation based worship is not just the worship that you do in here. Revelation based worship is not how, amen, wild you are in the house, but revelation based worship is the life that you live outside of these walls. It is the lifestyle that says that God is my everything and I'll give up everything for the will of God. It is where you say, God, however you want to use me, you can use me. God, whatever you want to do with me, God, you you can do it every time amen a sacrifice went up to God there were three things that happened watch this there was a blessing that was released upon the people there was a curse removed off of the people glory or there was a victory sealed by the sacrifice every time you live a holy life unto God it releases a whiff aroma unto the Savior which releases a blessing removes a curse and and seals a victory. <laughs> I don't, are you catching this right? <laughs> See, I, I know you, you don't get a whole lot of natural acclaim from living a holy, but the spiritual benefits, glory to God, the power that you receive by living a life, Lord have mercy, where you have to deny your flesh, you have to deny your desires, you have to deny your wants, you have to deny the things that are holding, and you say, Lord, I know you can help me. And what that does for you when you make it successful, through one week when you so and so and so here's the power I hollered and hooped and changed keys last time I was here <laughs> we gonna talk today here here is the power and here's how you get your power back it doesn't come with you just coming here on Sunday and doing the Simon Says Praise. Doesn't come with you going through the motions and faking the funk. It comes with you living a life throughout the week that is pleasing unto the nostrils of God. The reality is that yes, none of us are perfect. But we need to stop using this excuse in the church that, well, ain't none of us perfect. We all got flaws, so we all going to be, the devil is a liar. Somebody can live holy. It's called discipline. 